Okay, shalom family. Most grace bless you all. Happy Sabbath to you all, brothers and sisters online. Okay, uh, so we're going to jump right into it. Okay, so today's topic is called the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord. Um, give me the book of Psalms. Psalms 108 verse 1. The book of Psalms chapter 108 verse 1. Read. Oh God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise. Even with my glory. You see what he's saying? He says, I will sing and give praise even with my glory. This is King David speaking, man. Okay, now give me Psalms 111, verse 1. The book of Psalms, chapter 111, verse 1. Go ahead. Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart. In the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. He says he will praise the Lord with his whole heart. This is, let's see what it means to praise the Lord with all you, with your whole heart. Psalms 138. Read Psalms 118 verse 1, please. First, start there. The book of Psalms, chapter 113 verse 1. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Come on. Praise, O ye servants of the Lord. O ye servants of the Lord. Let's get that in Leviticus 25, the last verse. Leviticus chapter 25, the last verse. The saints, the saints, it says, Praise ye the Lord. Praise, O ye servants of the Lord. Let's see who the servants of the Lord are. Come on. The book of Leviticus, chapter 25, verse 55. Read. For unto me, the children of Israel are servants. The children of Israel, we are God's servants. Come on. They are my servants. We are God's servants. Read. Whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt. Because the Lord delivered the 12 tribes of Israel out of Egypt from the hand of Pharaoh. So go back, Psalms 118, verse 1. The book of Psalms, chapter 113, verse 1. Go ahead. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Read. Praise, O ye servants of the Lord. O ye twelve tribes of Israel. Go ahead. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. So the praise of the Most High God is to praise his name. Get that in Revelation 19. Revelation chapter 19 and verse 13. The book of Revelation, chapter 19, verse 13. Come on. And he was clothed with a vesture, vesture dipped in blood. Read. And his name is called the Word of God. And his name is what? His name is called the Word of God. His name is called the Word of God. His name is called the Word of God. Go back to Psalms 113, verse 1 again. The book of Psalms, chapter 113, verse 1. Come on. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise. O ye servants of the Lord. O ye servants of the Lord. O you twelve tribes of Israel, the sons and daughters of Jacob. Read. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. What is the name of the Lord? His commandments, his laws. Okay. Psalms 111 and 10. No, no. Go back to Psalms 111, verse 1 again. The book of Psalms, chapter 111, verse 1. Read. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Come on. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart. Read. In the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. So the assembly is the congregation, which is the 12 tribes of Israel. Now give me the book of Psalms 138. Psalms 138, read verse 1. The book of Psalms, chapter 138, verse 1. Hey, is there like a tissue somewhere? Read. I will praise thee with my whole heart. I will what? I will praise thee with my whole heart. I will praise thee with my whole heart. Come on. Before the gods will I sing praise unto thee. Read that again. I will praise thee with the book of Psalms, chapter 138, verse 1. Read. I will praise thee with my whole heart. I will praise thee with my whole heart. Read. Before the gods will I sing praises unto thee. Before the gods will I sing praises unto thee. Get the definition of what the gods are. You know where to go? Let's go. The book of Acts, chapter 23. Verse 5. Read. Then said Paul, I wish not, brethren, that he was the high priest, for it is written, Thou shalt not speak evil of the ruler of thy people. Read that again. The book of Acts, chapter 23, verse 5. Then said Paul. The book of Acts, chapter 23, verse 4. Read. And they that stood by said, Revilest thou God's high priest? Revilest thou God's high priest? Read. Then said Paul, I wish not, brethren, that he was the high priest, mm. 
For it is written, Go ahead. Thou shalt not speak evil of the ruler of thy people. You see that God's high priest is the ruler of thy people. God's high priests are the rulers. That's what he's saying. Get Exodus 22, 28 now. Exodus 22, verse 28. Let's get there. The book of Exodus, chapter 22, verse 28. Read. Thou shalt not revile the gods. Thou shalt not revile the gods. Come on. Nor curse the ruler of thy people. Nor what? Nor curse the ruler of thy people. Nor curse the ruler of thy people. That's who the gods are. Go back to Psalms now. 138. The book of Psalms, chapter 138, verse 1. Read. I will praise thee with my whole heart. Before the gods will I sing praise unto thee. Go ahead. I will worship toward the holy temple. That's what it means to praise the Lord, to worship him. You understand? To praise the Lord means to worship him. Go ahead. I will worship toward the holy temple. Read that's Jerusalem. Come on. And praise thy name for thy, for thy loving kindness. You see, and what? And praise thy name. And for what? The, and praise thy name. And praise thy name. So he's telling, he's being specific. To worship the Lord, to praise the Lord is to worship his name. The same thing we read in Psalms 118. Go ahead. And praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thy law. Come on. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy, above all thy name. He says, because thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. The word of God is his commandments. The word of God is his commandments. That's what we read in here. Read that again. The book of Psalms, chapter 128, verse 2. I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. Read. For thou hast magnified the word above all thy name. Above all thy name. Above all thy name. Meaning all the different names that the Lord has, those are, that's not his original name. That's not his actual name. Because we will corrupt it. You understand? Go back now to Psalms. Psalms 111 verse 1. The book of Psalms chapter 111 verse 2. Verse 1 again. The book of Psalms chapter 111 verse 1. Praise ye the Lord. I will praise the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart. Read. In the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. In the assembly of the upright and in his congreg in the congregation. The congregation is where we at. This is the congregation. This is the assembly. Okay. Jump down to Psalms 112, verse 1. The book of Psalms, chapter 112, verse 1. Watch this. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the name. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. There it is, right there. You see that? Read again, man. Psalms 112 verse 1. Come on. The book of Psalms chapter 112 verse 1. Read. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. So we're just going over this now. The name of the class is called the fear of the Lord. When you praise the Lord, it means you fear him. Read it again. The book of Psalms chapter 112 verse 1. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. Read. That delighted greatly in his commandments. You see what it means to fear the Lord? To delight greatly in his commandments. To fear the Lord is to keep his commandments. Now give me Psalms 111 and 10. Psalms 111 and 10 now. The book of Psalms chapter 111 verse 10. Basically Psalms 111 and 10 is repeated in Psalms 112 and 1. Read that again. The book of Psalms chapter 111 verse 10. Read. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Come on. A good understanding. A what? A good understanding. Because if you delight in his commandments, guess what? You're going to have a good understanding. That's what he's saying. Read. Have all day that do his commandments. Have all day that do his commandments. Come on. His praise endureth forever. Because his praise is his commandments that endures forever. Make sense? Get that in Psalms 119, verse 142. Let's prove that. His praise endureth forever because his praise is his commandments which endures forever. Read that. The book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 142. Watch this. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. There it is. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness and his praise endureth forever. Read. And thy law is the truth. And thy what? Thy law is the truth. And thy law is the truth. Get that in 2 Ezra chapter 9. 2 Ezra 9.
Second Ezra chapter 9, read verse 36. We're going to read that. The second book of Ezra chapter 9, verse 36. Read. For we that have, re for we that have received the law perish by sin. You see that? For we that have received the law, we perish by sin. Why? Because we're not keeping the commandments. Because we're breaking the laws of God, now we die. We are mortal now. Read again. The second book of Ezra, chapter 9, verse 36. Read. For we that have for we that have received the law. For we that have received the law. Come on. Perish by sin. We perish by sin. Because sin is how we, we, we get death. Get that in Romans 6.23. Sin is how we get put to death, man. So we must keep the commandments. That's why it says, For they that have received the law perish by sin. Who have received the law? The 12 tribes of Israel have received the law. So we perish by sin. Read that. The book of Romans, chapter 6, verse 23. Watch this. For the wages of sin is death. You see that? The wages of sin is death. The price you pay for breaking God's laws is death. That's what we're reading here. Read. But the gift of God is but, eternal. But the what? The gift of God. The gift of God is what now? Is eternal life. Is what? Eternal life. That's the gift. The gift is eternal life. So the greatest gift that you can ever receive is not money. No, it's the laws of God. The greatest gift that anybody can give you is God's commandments. When you keep God's commandments and teach God's commandments, that is the greatest gift you can give to anybody. Because we are giving them the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Read that again. The book of Romans chapter 6 verse 23. Read. For the wages of sin is death. Read. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. There it is. So go back. Second Ezra 9. Verse 36. The second book of Ezra, chapter 9, verse 36. Watch this. For we that have received the law. Who is the we that have received the law? Romans 3, verse 1. Who is the we that have received the law? Because the law was only given to one people and one people alone, the 12 tribes of Israel. But let's prove that, in case you think I'm just making things up. Romans chapter 3 and verse 1. The book of Romans chapter 3 verse 1. Go ahead. What advantage then had the Jew? What advantage then have the 12 tribes of Israel? Read. Or what profit is there in circumcision? Is there of circumcision? Or what profit is there of circumcision? What does circumcision profit you? Go ahead, he's going to tell you. Much every way. In every which way you can think, it profits. Read. Chiefly. Mainly. Because that unto them. Unto the Jews in verse 1. Were committed the oracles of God. You see that? Unto us was committed the oracles of God. He's telling you, the we which we have received the law is the 12 tribes of Israel in verse 1. The Jews. Okay, go ahead. For what if some did not believe? Because what if some don't believe that? Some don't believe that the laws was given to us. Some don't believe that the laws that was given to us, we're supposed to observe it. That's why they don't observe it. That's why they don't follow counsel. That's why they don't apply the counsel. That's why they don't examine themselves. They believe it was given to us. Some don't believe it was given to us only. Some believe it was given to us and those that believe it was given to us believe that they don't have to keep it because Christ died. Keep going. Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Shall their unbelief, what is the faith of God? Christ. Shall their unbelief make Christ without effect? Read. God forbid. God for meaning no. Go ahead. Yea. Yes. Let God be true. Let the Bible be true. Come on. But every man a liar. But every man a liar. Come on. As it is written. Read. That thou mayest be justified in thy sayings. We may be justified in our sayings. Thus say the Lord. Come on. And might us overcome when thou art judged. When people try to fight forth with us, we are going to overcome them. Having no evil thing to say of us. That's what he's saying. So go back. Second Genesis 9 verse 36. The second book of Ezra, chapter 9, verse 36. Read. For we that have received the law perish by sin. You see that? Let's get the definition of sin. For we, for we, who is the we again that have received the law? The Jews, the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay. First John 3 and 4. Let's get the definition of sin. The first book of John, chapter 3, verse 4. Read. 
Whosoever committed sin, whosoever commits commits sin, right? transgresseth also the law. You know what it means to commit? Means you are committed to it. Yeah, commit goes goes back. Commit commitment. Okay, read that again. The first book of John, chapter three, verse four. Meaning you've given yourself to it. That's what it means to commit. You commit to sin, you have given yourself to it. Read. Whosoever committed sin, transgressed. Whosoever has given himself to sin, transgressed also the law. That was given to the Jews in Romans 3 and 1. Read that again. The first book of John, chapter 3, verse 4. Whosoever committed sin, transgressed also the law. Read. For sin is the transgression of the law. Because sin is the breaking of God's law. So go back. Second Ezra chapter 9, verse 36. The second book of Ezra, chapter 9, verse 36. Read. For we that have received the law perish by sin. We perish by sin. Go ahead. And our heart also which received it. And our mind also which have received it. So the mind is where the, the, the laws of God are supposed to be. Where is the proof of that? Read verse 30. Jump up to verse 30. The second book of Ezra, chapter 9, verse 30. Watch this. And thou speakest, saying, Hear me, O Israel. And mark my words. And what? And mark my words. And what? And mark my words. In your mind. In your mind. Mark my words in your mind. Because it says, And our hearts also we shall receive it. We are commanded to hear the word of God and mark it in our minds and receive it in our hearts. Read. And mark my words, thou seed of Jacob. He's telling you who Israel is. The seed of Jacob. Jump down to verse 36 now again. Verse 36. For we that have received the law perish by sin. Go ahead. And our heart also which received it. Watch this. Notwithstanding, the law perisheth not. There it is. The law perisheth not. And his praise endureth forever. The law perisheth not. It doesn't perish. It endures forever. Read. But remaineth in his force. But remaineth in his force. Unto this day. 2023. So, what we just read here, go back to Psalms 119, verse 142. The book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 142. Read. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. Come on. And thy law is the truth. And thy what? Thy law is the truth. And thy law is the truth. It is an everlasting righteousness. His praise endureth forever. Psalms 111 and 10. Let's get that real quick. The book of Psalms, chapter 111, verse 10. Read. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The first thing you must fear is the Lord's judgment. When you find yourself that you keep going back to the same sin, because that seems to be the sickness. The same sin over and over. You don't fear the Lord. You are not afraid of what the Lord will do. You basically provoking Him to anger. You basically playing. You you basically playing Russian roulette with the Most High. That's what you're doing. You find yourself for it. Number one, you get rebuked for the same thing, and the same correction keeps coming up over and over. You don't fear the Lord. You play games with the Most High. Read that again. The book of Psalms, chapter 111, verse 10. Read. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Is the beginning of wisdom. We're not saying Satan is not going to pay you a visit. Because if Satan departs and returns again in the next season, it means there's something you're doing. If the same sin keep coming up over every week, same thing. Every week, same thing. Every week is the same thing. You're not doing anything about it. Because he's supposed to depart for a season because you've been doing something. But every week is the same thing over and over. You're not doing nothing about it. Let me prove that. Give me the book of Luke. Luke 4. Luke 4 verse 13. Start of verse 12. Start of verse 12. The book of Luke chapter 4 verse 12. Read. Read. And Jesus answered him, said unto them, unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not what? Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. You shall not tempt the Lord thy God. Don't be tempting the most high which you sin. 
Go ahead. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, you see that when the devil had ended all the temptation, read. He departed from him for a season. You see that he departed from him for a season. So I was letting you know. If the sin came every week is the same thing. Every week is the same demon. The de the, how come the devil is not departing from you for a season? How come? It means you don't fear the Lord. Because if the devil departs from you for a season, it means when the devil came, he realized that you fortified in your mind. You are fighting that demon off. So the devil is like, well, that's the, it's not the right time. He's going to return again to see where he went. But every week is the same thing. Guess what? The devil has not departed from you yet about that thing. Because he's supposed to depart and you fortify, you train more, then something else comes. Then you deal with that. But every week is that the same thing. You're not doing nothing about it. <coughs> Go back to Psalms. 111 and 10. The book of Psalms, chapter 111, verse 10. Read. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Come up. A good understanding. So, so the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That means you are afraid of his judgments. The judgment that the Lord will bring upon you, you are afraid of it. You understand? Watch this. Go back to Psalms. Give me Psalms. Psalms 1, uh, 113. Psalms 112, verse 1 again. The book of Psalms, chapter 112, verse 1. Read. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. You see that? Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. So when you praise the Lord, you bless because you fear him. Read. That delighted greatly in his commandments. That's it right there. That's how you, when you fear the Lord, it means you delight. Not just any type of delight. It says you delight greatly in his commandments. Greatly. Meaning there's nothing that gives you more joy than you keeping the laws of God. Nothing. There's no woman that can make you more happy than you keeping God's laws. That's what the Lord is saying. If you don't delight in God's laws, come on, man. Because you delight in God's laws, right? The spirit of the Lord will be in you. The Lord will delight in you. Then the Lord will send you a sister who also delight, who will delight in you. I give you delight in the Lord. The Lord will send you a sister who delights in you, whose mind is after your mind. Remember, the first, the first love is the laws of God. I'm talking to the men now. And the sisters too. Your first love is God's commandments. When you have mastered loving the laws of God so much and the spirit of the Lord dwells in you, Remember, wisdom is compared to a woman. So now when you have you have delighted, you still delight in the laws of God. The day when the Lord sends you a woman, that woman, she was delighting also in the laws of God before she came and proved you. So now when she's with you, guess what? The spirit of the Lord is with you. Then she delights in you. You see how that works? That's, that's the secret, man. That's the secret. So if you're sitting here, you're not delighting in the laws of God, you're waiting for a woman, you're waiting for a man. The day when you meet that man in the congregation, you prove that it's not going to work out. You know why? Because you did not delight in the laws of the Mosai. You were just faking it. Mm, like some of you have been here. Psalms 112 verse 1 again. Book of Psalms, chapter 112, verse 1. Read. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. That delighted greatly in his commandments. That delighted greatly in his commandments. You must delight greatly in the laws of God. Give me that in Proverbs 6. Because King Solomon said the same thing. Proverbs 6, 23. Book of Proverbs, chapter 6, verse 23. For the commandment is a lamp. The commandment is a lamp. Read. And the law is light. And the law is light. Go ahead. 
and reproofs of instructions are the way of life. So the laws of God is the way of life. The laws of God is the way of life. There's no anything there's no, anything else comes second to this, does not even come close. The laws of God is the way of life. How are you supposed to make decisions on a day to day? Whether it be about eating, whether it be about dress code, whether it be I'm choosing a spouse, whether it, it doesn't matter what it is. Then at the end of the day, the laws of God is the way of life. If you go outside of that way of life, you simple. You are a simp and a sad husband. And you are an alpha female. Understand that, man. Okay, Proverbs 7. Read verse 2 again. Read verse 2 now. Start of verse 1. The book Proverbs chapter 7, verse 1. Read. My son, keep my words. Mark my words. That's the same thing we just read, isn't it? Yes, sir. Is it mark my words in 2 Exodus 9, verse 30? Read. And lay up my commandments with thee. In your mind, mark my words. Read. Keep my commandments and live. Do what? Keep my commandments and live. That's the gift in Romans 6.23. Go ahead. And my law is the apple of thine eye. And my what? My law is the apple of thine eye. You see that? That's your love right there. And my law is the apple of thine eye. Of thine heart. Of thine eye. Yes, yes, yes. So, so. The apple of your eye is the laws of God. You're not married. That's the apple. The apple of your eye is God's commandments. The thing that troubles me, though, is brothers and sisters, right? Yeah, you're studying. You're studying. You're doing going over your chapters. And, and yes, you should. You must study. The, the thing that troubles me is once you do your chapters, man, you close the Bible. And then you just go to nigger mode. It's immediate. It doesn't even register in your head. Shortly after. It doesn't. You go over your chapters, right? As soon as you are done, it's like, whew, my quarter for the day. Then go back to nigger mode. You, it's like nothing happened. It's like you didn't study. Because you did it. You go straight to nigger mode, man. Almost immediately after you close the Bible, after you do your chapters. Because it's just this monotonous thing that you're doing. You don't have a personal, I'll use the word they use in the Christian church. You don't have a personal relationship <laughs> with the Bible. So my point is, it's like, you know, when, when you are baking the, baking the world, when you're still, you know, whoring yourself out and whatnot, is... When you don't get an SMS from the sister or the man, it's like something going on. You know, I'm used to getting an SMS in the morning and things of that nature. I'm used to getting a call at this time or around this time. And then in the evening, I'm getting a call. We have a 30, an hour, 30 minutes to an hour conversation. And then we both go to sleep. Yeah, you hang up. No, you hang up. Yeah, you hang up. No, you hang up. Yeah, you hang up. You don't click. So, so... That thing, you know, that, that deep connection that you had is not happening with this. <coughs> and that's the problem. That means the law is not the apple of your eye. You're supposed to have that, man. But you don't have it. And that means you, the law is not the apple of your eye. Something else is. Proverbs 7 verse 2. One more again. Read it again. The book of Proverbs chapter 7 verse 2. Read. Keep my commandments and live. Keep my commandments and live. Read. And my law is the apple of thine eye. And my law is the apple of thine eye. You see that? So that's how it's supposed to be. And, and now when somebody talks to, talk, talk to your significant other in the world, you just immediately become jealous. Why is he talking to my woman? Vice versa. The sister be like, why is she talking to my man? Huh? She's mad. You're not supposed to be talking to my man like that. You see what? <laughs> Don't, that was the Lucy or something. Don't mess with my man. That's the song. Also, nobody, everybody's confused now. Don't mess with my man. Oh, Lucy <laughs> something. That's what I said, Lucy something. Lucy Pen. Yep, yep. So now, when somebody is handling this book, 
and they're supposed to know what's in it. Why can't you jail? How are you not getting jealous? If the brother is breaking the commandment, why aren't you jealous? Because you are not connected to this. The laws of God is not the apple of your eye. You're not mad. So when the brother gets corrected or sister, brothers be looking at me like, what the hell? Yo, that was too high because I'm jealous, damn it. Kinali jealous, <laughs> I've got it. Pray for that thing, man. No, I'm serious. Pray for it. Because if that's not happening, well, that's the problem. If you're not experiencing that, that means the laws of God is not the apple of your eye. It is not. That's why our forefathers in the past, they were putting Negroes in check. You understand? They were not playing because why? The laws of God were the apple of their eye. That's why. So same the sisters. I'm not talking that I'm not just talking to the men. I'm talking to the sisters too. Yeah. Uh, look what Daniel was doing. He was being demonic. He got checked. Since the death was like, whoa. So if my daughter be doing this, that's what's going to happen. You see? Jealousy. You see my point? Okay, go back to Psalms 111 and 10. Psalms 111 and verse 10. Psalms chapter 111 verse 10. Actually, we read it earlier in the beginning. Psalms 108 verse 1. Because King David said the same thing actually. Psalms chapter 108 verse 1. Oh Lord, my heart is fixed. My what? My heart is fixed. Meaning my heart is fixed. Is fixated on this. But why are you always fixated on this thing? Yes, King David says my heart is fixed. Read. Really? I will sing and give praise. He says, I'm going to sing and give praise. Read on. Even with my glory. Even with my glory. You see what he said? Verse 3. I will praise thee, O Lord, among the people. He says, I'm going to praise thee, O Lord, among the people. Go ahead. And I will, I will sing praises unto thee among the nations. I will sing praises unto thee among the nations. You see that? That's some heavy stuff, man. King David is saying, so that jealousy you're supposed to have it. You see your brother going off? You must be jealous for that thing. Well, hey, I pay you are going against my spouse. What the hell are you doing, man? You understand? The sister also. Because sometimes you find that the sister will see you, you're going off. Because it can happen that the sister is noticing, well, hey, you're going off. She can help you in the scriptures. Yep. Me, I'm speaking from experience, by the way. So, read the verse again. The book of Psalms, chapter 108, verse 2. Because these are the daughters of Zion, right? Go ahead. The book of Psalms, chapter 108, verse 3. I, I'm not talking about the sister be pulling out the priest and say, Read, brother. No, I'm not talking about that, man. I'm talking about where... A sister can see you, or let's say, okay, let me just make it personal. Your wife. Your wife, you can see, or okay, but hey, this one was not. I see, or my Lord is going off the rails. The sister is not going to say, but you going off. She's not going to say that, man. The sister who's got wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, she'll sit with you and show you, say, hey, you know, um, if it pleases my Lord. You see, when the old statement opens like that? <laughs> <laughs> If somebody just be demonic about that, I come on, please stop it, man. The minute you hear, if it pleases my Lord, ah, then you're like, okay, I'm being battered, oh, please. <laughs> so, so let me pay attention. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Like, our former the Judith one is talking to our forefathers, what was I? You understand? Yeah, to say, you know, if it pleases my Lord, but the handmate was, you know, looking at such and such, and I see when we want, then you're like, oh, yeah, I see that. Oh, please, keep it moving. Read verse 1 again, man. Psalms 108, verse 1. Book Psalms, chapter 108, verse 1. O Lord, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise, even with my glory. Even with my glory. Psalms 116, verse 1. Watch this. Psalms 
I want you to know see some things here. The wording, the emphasis that is being made in verse 1. Psalms 116 verse 1. Psalms chapter 116 verse 1. Watch this. I love the Lord. I what? I love the Lord. This is King David speaking, man. Look at the L-O-V-E. It's in bold. He is making an emphasis. He was in love with the Lord. How? With his commandments. He was in love with pleasing the Lord and his commandments. Read it again, man. The book of Psalms, chapter 116, verse 1. Read. I love the Lord eh. because he had heard my voice and my supplication. You see that thing? He says, I love the Lord because he heard my voice. Meaning when I prayed, the Lord heard my voice and my supplication. Meaning me humbling myself towards him. He heard my voice. Read. Because he had inclined his ear unto me. Because he could have been listening to somebody else. But the Lord chose to listen to you. The most I God, man. And the advocate on the right hand of the majesty. He's like, yo. You see the sun right there? You look at your son right there, what he's doing. He's like, yeah, no, I see that day. I see that day. Michael, go down there. Minister unto him. Man, that's beautiful, man. Because that's our family. You understand? Read. I love the Lord because he had heard my voice and my supplication. Read. Because he had inclined his ear unto me. Go ahead. Therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. You see that? He says, therefore I'm going to call upon the Lord as long as I live. As long as the Lord is still keeping us upon this earth, you better praise the Lord your God, man. Do not hold back. Praise the Lord, man. You struggling with something? Go to the Lord and cry unto him. Ask the Lord to help you to overcome it. The Lord will help you indeed if you're serious. If you're not double-minded about your request. Read on. The sorrows of death compass me. Mm. And the pains of hell. And the pains of hell gate hold upon me. They get hold upon me. Go ahead. And the pains of hell gate of hell gate hold upon me. No, no, it says, it says, the sorrows of death compass me. And the pains of hell get hold upon me. Go ahead. And the pains of hell get hold upon me. Read. I will find trouble and sorrow. I found trouble and sorrow on my way. Go ahead. I found trouble and sorrow. Read. Then called I upon the name of the Lord. You see that? It says, I kept the commandments, man. Read. Then called I upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee. Deliver my soul. You see that? Oh Lord, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. Because he understood your soul is on the line, man. Your soul is on the line. It says, fear him that can destroy both body and soul. That's the one you must fear. Read. Gracious, gracious is the Lord. And righteous, yea, our God is merciful. Our God is merciful, man. Read. The Lord preserveth the sin. Because we are the simple, man. With the simple. Read that again. The book of Psalms, chapter 116, verse 6. Read. The Lord preserveth the simple. The Lord preserveth the simple. I was brought low. We have been brought low as a nation. Come on. And he helped. Me. And he what? He helped. He restored He restored our soul. That's what the Lord is doing right now. He restored my soul. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Read that again. The book of Psalms, chapter 116, verse 6. The Lord preserveth the simple. I was brought low, and he helped me. And the Lord is helping us. Read verse 8. Verse 8. For thou hast delivered my soul. Actually, read verse 7, man. The book of Psalms, chapter 116, verse 7. Read. Return unto thy rest. Return unto thy rest. O my soul. O my what? O my soul. O my soul. The rest is what? The kingdom. The rest is that immortal body that we're going to get back. Read. Because right now our soul is not at rest. If our soul is not addressed in captivity, our soul is not addressed inside our, in our, inside our mortal, corruptible, vile bodies. We are trapped inside this cage, man. This is a cage. And it's got a time limit. This is a cage, but our soul liveth forever. But this cage right here, yeah, it's got a time limit on it. Okay, come on, because of sin. Read. Return unto my rest, mm. O my soul. Come on. 
For the Lord had dealt bountifully with thee. In the kingdom, the Lord will deal bountifully with us. Right now, the Lord is restoring our soul. Read. For thou hast delivered my soul from death. The Lord has delivered our soul from death. Spiritual death. And physical also. But most importantly, spiritual death. Read. My eyes. My eyes from tears. Uh -huh. And my feet from falling. And my feet from falling into sin. Because the Lord restores our soul. We keep his commandments. Read. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. You see that? I will walk now. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. The land of the living. What's the land of the living? Jerusalem. The kingdom of heaven on earth. That's the land of the living. The living here is talking about the life eternal. Read the verse again, man. The book of Psalms, chapter 116, verse 8. Read. For thou hast delivered my soul from Because death. thou hast delivered my soul from death. This death right here is what? The second death. This is the death that King David is talking about here. It's not regular death. It's the second death. Read. My eyes from tears. My eyes from tears. Go ahead. And my feet from falling. My feet from falling into the lake of fire. Read on. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. The land of the living is the kingdom of heaven on earth. That's the land of the living. Yep, that's the land of the living. We read it earlier. I know some of you forgot. Proverbs 7 verse 2. Go back there again. It says, I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. The land of the living, that's the kingdom of heaven on earth. The book of Proverbs chapter 7 verse 2. Read. Keep my commandments and live. Keep my commandments and what? And live. And live. Read. And my law as the apple of thine eye. And my law as the apple of thine eye. Because even in the kingdom, the laws of God will be the apple of our eye. Because now in the kingdom, our minds and our spirits and our bodies will be changed. The only thing that's going to be on our minds 24 hours a day is God's commandments. Because right now there's too many distractions, man. What are those distractions? Sin. Sin is distracting us. Okay? Sin is distracting us. That's what you need to understand. Okay? So go back to Psalms 111 and 10. The book of Psalms, chapter 111, verse 10. Read. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Read on. A good understanding. A what? A good understanding. A good understanding. A good understanding. Come on. Have all they that do his commandments. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. Read. His praise endureth forever. The question is, the good understanding you get it from the keeping of the laws of God. But for you to keep the laws of God correctly, you have to be taught to do it. Give me Acts 8, start at verse 27. Acts chapter 8, verse 27. The book of Acts chapter 8, verse 27. Read. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, an eunuch of great, of great authority, and a Candace, queen of the Ethiopians. Read. Who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship. So this was not in Ethiopia. It was, it was an Israelite scattered in Ethiopia and he had to go to Jerusalem for to worship. Uh, give me Exodus 23. 23, 14. Start of his 14. Exodus 23, 14. <coughs> I was thinking of Isaiah 1. That's why I went there. Read it. The book of Exodus, chapter 23, verse 1. Verse 14. The book of Exodus, chapter 23, verse 14. Read. Three times thou shalt keep a feast unto me in the year. You see that? It says three times. So three times in a year, we are all commanded to appear before the Lord. The Feast of Unleavened Bread the Feast of Weeks, and the Feast of Tabernacles. So the Ethiopian eunuch was obeying this law right here. Go back to Acts.
Verse 27 again. The book of Acts, chapter 8, verse 27. Read. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, an eunuch of great authority, and a Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had a charge of all her treasure. And he came, he came to Jerusalem for to worship. Read. Was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Esaias the prophet. He was reading the book of Isaiah. Come on. Then the spirit said unto Philip, mm -hmm. Go near and join thyself to this chariot. Go and join yourself to this chariot, meaning the Ethiopian eunuch. Read on. And Philip ran thither to him mm -hmm. and heard him read the prophet Isaiah. So he was reading it out loud. That's why he says he heard him. Go ahead. And said, Understandest thou what thou readest? Do you understand what you're reading? He's asking him. Go ahead. You see the key word? Understandest thou what thou readest? The key word understand. Do you understand what you read? Remember it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. That's why he's asking me. Understandest thou what thou readest? Read. And he said, How can I? Except some man should guide me. You see that? How can I understand what I'm reading except a man should guide me? Go ahead. And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. You see that thing? So go back to Psalms now. What in heaven and ten? Book of Psalms chapter 111 verse 10. Actually, you know what? Give me Hebrews 5. Start of verse 10. Verse 11. Because now if I read verse 10, we have to go somewhere else. Read verse 11. The book of Hebrews, chapter 5, verse 11. Come on. Of him of whom we have many things to say. Uh-huh. And hard to be uttered. And hard to be uttered, meaning regarding Christ. Read on the high priest in verse 10. Read. Seeing ye are dull of hearing. Seeing ye are dull of hearing. Remember, the Ethiopian eunuch was reading the book of Isaiah out loud, but he was dull of hearing. Dull of hearing means what? He did not understand. That's what says, he that had an ear, let him what? Let him hear. Meaning, let him understand. So Philip, although he was reading, he could not understand what he was reading. That's what it says, understandest thou what thou readest. Read. He was dull of hearing, meaning you could not understand. Get it? Yes, Read. For when? For the time you ought to be teaching. Because for the time you were needed to be teachers. Read. You have need that one teach you again. You see that you are is necessary that you are taught again. You are taught again how to bath, how to eat, how to speak, how to conduct yourself, what to eat. You understand? How to dress, all of that. You need to be taught again all these things. How to maintain good hygiene as a brother, as a sister. So on, all of that you need to be taught again from beginning, from zero. So some people are still struggling with those things, okay? But you have to be taught again. And some people are going to come up in here, they say, no, but I'm older, I don't need to be taught this thing. Just keep it moving, the door is open, don't let it hit you on the way out. Because we, the people that we want to teach is those that want to hear this book. You don't want to hear this book, you don't need to be here. You understand? Read that again. The book of Hebrews, chapter 5, verse 12. Read. For, for when... For when for the time you ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again. It's necessary that you are taught again. Come on. Which be the first principles of the oracles of God. So the first principles of the oracles of God is that you be taught again so you can be born again. Read. And I become such as have need of milk. You need the milk. Milk is necessary. All the other stuff is just um, additional cherries on top. But the thing that we need every day, because it says they have need of milk. That means milk is necessary on a daily basis. Go ahead. And not of strong meat. And not of strong meat. The strong meat is not going to be helpful to you if you don't understand the milk. The simple ex explanation of the milk is follow cancer. That's simple. Here's another thing that I'm noticing, especially with you brothers. Give me the book of Proverbs 10. I'm noticing something. Proverbs 10, read verse 19 for me. 
Actually, start with 18. Start with 17, actually. Hmm. Yep, read it. The book of Proverbs, chapter 10, verse 17. Actually, you know what? Start with 16. The Watch book, this thing, man. The book of Proverbs, chapter 10, verse 16. Watch this. The labor of the right, the labor of the righteous tended to life. The labor of the righteous is the keeping of the commandment. Because what does the righteous do? They labor to keep the laws of God. That's their labor. It says tended to life. What life? Eternal life. To be in the land of the living. Read. The fruit of the wicked to sin. The fruit of the wicked is to sin. Their fruit is to sin. Is when explain what the sin is. Keep going. He is in the way of life that keepeth instruction. You see, that's the righteous. He that, is he is what? He is in the way of life that keepeth instruction. But watch this. But he that refu refuseth reproof error. You see that? But he that refuseth reproof, they are they <laughs> sin. To refuse reproof is, brothers, you busy. When you are being spoken to, you still busy involved in whatever the hell you're doing. That means you are not focused. You are not. Your spirit is not on active mode. You slumber. You have to be repeated over and over, and then you are you disengage from what you're looking at. So you're still on child mode. Because children, when a child is holding on to a toy, you talk to them once, they don't hear you. You know why? Because they've given their life to that toy. You see that thing? And it's been happening over and over. I've been noticing it. And with the same brothers. One of them is left, but a lot of you still left, you still around, you still around. So, Wawonor is the problem. So, therefore, take heed to this. Read that again. The book of Proverbs, chapter 10, verse 16. Read. The labor of the righteous tended to life. They tend to life. Watch this. Read. The fruit of the wicked to sin. The fruit of the wicked is to sin. Because your ears are dull of hearing. You're not active. Read. He is in the way of life that keepeth instruction. That's the way of the righteous. He is always in the way of life that keepeth instruction. They keep instruction. They are always they actively they are an active listener. But if you have to be repeated over and over, you are a passive listener because something else is occupying your mind. So your mind is activated and captivated by that. Read. But he that refu refuseth reproof, err. You see, go ahead, watch this. He that hideth hatred with lying lips. They hide hatred with lying lips. Simple thing, yes or no. No, no, the brothers have to include stuff in it. The explanations. Some of you, when I talk to you, you cannot just give me a yes or no. Man. Even when the, because I think it was a soldier, basically who corrected one of you. It says, no, yes or no. You had to add something. Some spices in it. The brother all right there, he was saying, stay in the spirit. You did it. You just ignored him. You had to say something. You see my point? Those traits, like those are some husband's type of traits. Come on, man. You see, like uh, in a military, the minute you start to add stuff, you're not a soldier. You're still hooked up to your mama's breast. You can't let it go. The most high says, yeah, that's why Christ is a commandment. By the way, remember, it's a commandment, right? <laughs> but that commandment will help with it because I got something to say. I don't understand. I can expect this from the sisters, but some sisters are actually doing better in that department. You tell them, yes, sir, they keep it moving, go and do it. There's not going to be spices in between the conversation because why? You try to what? You try to be, you try to con, you try to deceive me thinking what you actually agree with the instruction, but you don't. So to make you feel better, you have to add your spice. Then you go. Because you cannot just take it and go do it. You have to add some spices. You're not ready to man up yet. I'm just telling you, you're not ready. <laughs> you're not ready. You not. You don't fear the Lord. He says, let your communication, let's put the spirit up. We can't be back here to Proverbs 10. Matthew 5, is it? That's what we want, right? Hmm? So you're busy? Yes, sir. Let's get it. Matthew 5. Read verse 37. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 37. Watch this. But let your communication 
Hold on. Is it Christ that to repeat it even? <laughs> it is a let your convocation be yay, and he left it there. No. Is it let your convocation be yay, yay? So you see the first yay is in caps. He is emphasizing it. Read. Nay, 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 nay. Read. For whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. So somehow that last part is new. You're not getting it. It says whatsoever. What does that mean, whatsoever? Whatsoever. It means what it means. Whatsoever. Whatever you're going to add, that means you're trying to bring evil to me. Where do you think the militaries of the world, they get it from? When they talk to you, yes, sir. When they talk to you, no, sir. That's it. But the minute you want to add this, I know your mama is up in there. That's how I know. So Christ gave us a commandment, man. Remember in verse 1. Read verse 1. Because he began to do what now? <laughs> the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 1. Read. And seeing the multitude, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, and when he was said his disciples came to him. When he was said, his disciples came to him. Now, the disciples mean students. You brothers, you are in, you students have been here. You disciples. Read. And when he was said, his disciples came unto him. Watch this. And he opened his mouth. Uh -huh. And taught them. And what? And taught them. And what? And taught them. Mm -hmm. Saying. Read verse 37. Verse 37. Uh -huh. But let your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay. For whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. You see, he was teaching the disciples how to conduct themselves. What was he also teaching? You see, with this one verse right here, you can replace a whole entire communications degree. Right here. Verse 37 again. It replaces three years of a communication and a marketing degree. One verse only. Read it again, man. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 37. Watch this. But let your communication uh -huh. Yay, yay. Your communication be what now? Yay, yay. Uh -huh. Nay, nay. Watch this. For whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. You could have just read this. <laughs> this could have been fine. And you couldn't have you, you wouldn't have spent also so much three years of <laughs> three years of just flashing money down the drain. You could have just read this verse. And you'll be done with it. Christ is teaching the disciples. The Bible is everything, man. You understand? Let's go back to Proverbs chapter 10. Let your communication be here. here. You see that thing right there? We just replaced the communication, a BA degree. <laughs> With what verse? Oh, praise the most that man. Christ was the master teacher. Man. Proverbs 10 verse 17. The book of Proverbs chapter 10 verse 17. Watch this. He is in the way of life that keepeth instruction. Watch this. Go ahead. But he that refuseth reproof, error. Watch this. He that hideth hatred with lying lips. He hides hatred with lying lips. Read on. And he that uttereth slander is a fool. That uttereth a slander is a fool. Watch this. Because remember, all this will attribute to this. Keep going. In the multitude of words. That's it right there. In the multitude of words. Go ahead. They wanted not sin. They wanted not sin. Meaning what? Anything whatsoever come, whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. What is he called? He's quoting King Solomon here. In Matthew 5. Read that verse again. The book of Proverbs, chapter 10, verse 19. Go ahead. In the multitude of words, they wanted not sin. You see that? Let your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay. But what? But he that refraineth his lips is wise. Because, he, but he that observe, yea, yea, nay, nay, it says what? He is wise. Watch this. The tongue of the just is a choice silver. Is as choice silver. Meaning what? It's, it's a precious metal. The tongue of the wise. Because the tongue of the wise will give you wisdom. You understand? But if you don't fear the Lord, you're just going to ignore the verses, man. The verse will say, yea, yea, nay, nay. Whatsoever is more than these. I mean, 
Yes is a simple answer. No is a simple answer. But whatsoever is more than a yes and a no, or no, is as coming of evil. That means if I ask you a question, you don't just give me the yes or no. That means you trying to deceive me. That's what the Lord is telling you, man. But guess what? You just keep over that one because you want to prophesy out of your own heart. Yes, that's what you're doing. You are Jezebel. Jezebel, Jezebel. Yeah, you Jezebel. Some husbands are Jezebel. That's what they be. Read. The tongue of the just is as choice silver. Uh -huh. The heart of the wicked is a little worth. Is a little worth, meaning what? Their worth is little. Meaning they are worthless, the Lord is saying. Go ahead. The lips of the righteous feed many. They feed many of the children of Israel in the congregation. Read on. But fools die for want of wisdom. Because they lack wisdom. The wisdom will tell you how to communicate. You don't need to go and do a degree. Go, go Boston. There's no need for that. Go ahead. The lips of the righteous feed many. Mm -hmm. But fools die for want of wisdom. You see that they die for want of winning, meaning what? You're going to die without wisdom. It will be as though you have never been born. And sisters, they also, the sisters, they are the sisters, by the way. When it comes to you, let your communications be yay, yay, woo, they struggle. You want to tell me a whole monologue. I don't want to hear that stuff, man. Just say yes or no. Then you can expound. And when you expound, it, like, keep it under 30 seconds. Yes. Okay. Now you can expound. 30 second rule. Yes. 30 seconds. Just keep it under 30 seconds. We're good. The minute is 45. Minute, I know. In the multitude of words. Again. It's like it goes right back to the beginning of the verse that the Lord says don't do. You understand that? Because I asked, where are we? No, no, we're almost done. Okay, where are we? You're not telling me that. Where are we? Are we done or are we not done? Are uh, you, you know, the yes, your honor, it's not, it's not, yes, we're done. Oh, no, we're not done. What's left? Mm, now only then the mind starts to start become active. You start to notice, or actually, had I kept a log of where I am, I would, I, I'd be done. It's basically application of how you move. It's just basic, it's, it's basically, it's housekeeping. That's what they call it in the world. Basic housekeeping. Whose house? Your house. Mm. <clears throat> Go back. Psalms 111. The book of Psalms, chapter 111, verse 10. Read. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Is the what? The beginning of wisdom. The beginning of wisdom. Come on. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. That do his commandments. Now, give me that in Sarah. Because fearing the Lord is, is something that it can be taken light. No, it's not a light thing. That's where your wisdom starts, man. Your wisdom, you pray the Lord. You, you ever notice? Brothers, when you pray, when you send up the prayers, you ask the Lord for wisdom. You ask the Lord for understanding. You ask the Lord for whatever it is that you're asking for. The one thing that you're not asking the Lord for, which is supposed to be top priority on the list, is for you to fear the Most High. You see, that's number one. <clears throat> ask for the spirit of meekness towards his laws. That's what you must ask for. Ask the Lord to give you the spirit of meekness, man. Because those men, our forefathers that had the spirit of meekness, they are recorded in the Bible. Get Sirach 2, read verse 15. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 2, verse 15. Watch this. They that fear the Lord uh -huh. will not disobey his word. Is that simple? Again, Psalms 111 and 10. They fear, the, no, don't go, don't get it. But I'm showing you that's where we just, is, is going over the same thing. They that fear the Lord will not disobey his word. That's why it says, a good understanding have all they that do his commandments. So the fear of the Lord, 
you, when you fear the Lord, you're not going to disobey his word. His word said, thou shalt not. You say, okay, I fear the Lord. I don't want to find out. Thou shalt not. I fear the Lord. I don't want to find out. But some of you are expecting the, the Lord to stop what he's doing to come down here. Because you keep being told the same thing over and over. So you only God can judge me. Yeah, of course only God can judge me. Think about it. I get it. You, you, don't, you, don't, listen to, you don't listen to counsel. You don't listen to correction. You don't listen to nothing. Only God can judge you. Because if you have to say it out loud, it will look funny. Like, you know, people will look at you funny. But you have to come some other way. Or you can procrastinate. Procrastination is an example of somebody who don't want to apply. Yes, you procrastinate to apply the counsel. You actually don't want to do it. But you just don't want to tell us, well, listen, I don't want to do this. You understand? Because the brother that was with us was like, hey, do the courses so you can upgrade yourself and have some any potential as a man. What did he say? Brother Johnny says, I actually don't want to do any of these courses. That's what he said, right? Yeah. He said with his own mouth, I actually don't want to do any of these courses. That's what he said. Because you know why he said that? Because the week before, no, no, the, the Sabbath, the council came out to say, um, brothers, they don't, they don't want to say, I don't want to follow the council. So they hide behind saying, yes, sir. But they don't do it. But they really don't want to do so. They don't want to come out and say it. So he decided, you know what? I'm going to be bold enough to say it. You, you see what I'm saying? That's when you are filled with Satan. When now you're going to the bold mode. You do it. You say, so, that, so, that, it's, it's so that they don't have to say, they don't have to mention this now. To say, some people, they, will, they, they, they don't want to just come out and say it. We're not telling you come out and say it. We say repent. But the one that is, the mind is filled with smoke, guess what he going to say? No, I'm actually going to be bold enough to say it. Like you're doing us a favor, like you're trying to prove the scriptures wrong. You're proving the scriptures right. You understand? Verse 15. One more again. Ecclesiasticus. <laughs> Chapter 2, verse 15. Read. They that fear the Lord will not disobey his word. You fear the Lord, you will not disobey his way. Come on. And they that love him will keep his ways. They will keep his commandments. Go ahead. They that fear the Lord will seek that which is well pleasing unto him. So that means your mission in life is to go and seek in the scriptures the things that please the Lord and do them. That means you must be having an intimate relationship with this book. Go ahead. And they that love him shall be filled with the law. You see that? They that love the law, the Lord will be filled with his laws. When he says he was filled with the Holy Ghost, it means he was filled with his laws. That's what it means to be filled with God's laws. It means to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Like Zacharias when he was prophesying, he was filled with the law because he feared the Lord. He was seeking that which was well-pleasing unto him. That's why out of him came John the Baptist. Elijah. You see that? Because his father, Zacharias, was filled with the law. You know why he was filled with the law? Because he feared the Lord. Read verse 16 again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 2, verse 16. Read. They that fear the Lord will seek that which is well-pleasing unto him. Come on. And they that love him shall be filled with the law. You see that? If you love the Lord, you'll be filled with the law. Go ahead. He's telling you what love is. He's telling you what it means to love the Lord. This is First John 5 and 3. You see that, right? Yes, sir. Uh-huh. Go ahead. They that fear the Lord will prepare their hearts. You see, you're meaning what? You will examine yourself. That's what it means to prepare your heart. You will examine yourself. Read. And humble their souls in his sight. You see that? That's the key right there. And humble their souls in his sight. 
How do we humble our souls? We keep his commandments. We fear, the, we fear him. We keep his commandments. We fast. We pray. We come together. You understand? We speak often. That's part of fearing the Lord. You understand? That's part of fearing the Most High. That's what it means right there. Now watch this. I'm going to show you something. You see, the spirit of meekness is part of you fearing the Lord. Um, give me the book of Numbers 12. Numbers. Yeah, Numbers 12, verse, verse 3. Watch this. The book of Numbers, chapter 12, verse 3. Watch this. Now, the man Moses was very meek. You see that? The man Moses was very meek. Meaning what? He humbled his soul greatly before the Lord. Read. Above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. Now that's heavy. Above all the men that were upon the face of the earth. Meaning during his time. During the time of Moses. I bet there were nations on this earth. During the time of Moses. But he says Moses was the meekest man on earth above all the men that ever set foot on the earth during his time. Because you might think about it and say, but that's impossible. No, it's highly, it's very possible. We're reading about it. He wrote the first five books. <laughs> he saw things that even till this day, they still can't be explained, some of them. Because the Lord has not fully opened everything. You understand? Um, read Genesis. Genesis chapter 6, read verse 8. Come on. The book of Genesis chapter 6 verse 8. Read. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. He found favor in the sight of the Lord. Noah. So during the time of Noah, there was no people during that. There was people during his time. Read. These are the generations of Noah. Uh -huh. Noah was a just man. He says he was a just man. Come on. And perfect in his generation. And what? Perfect in his generation. In his generation, meaning during his time, Noah was perfect above everybody on earth. Read. Right? And Noah walked with God. You see that thing right there? Noah walked with God. He feared the Lord, man. Read. Right? And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham and Japheth. Go ahead. The earth also was corrupt before God. Mm. And the earth was filled with violence. Like now, like now, right now, the earth is filled with violence. But watch this, read. And God looked upon the earth. The most high God looked upon the earth, read. And behold, uh -huh. it was corrupt. It was corrupt, read. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. You see, all flesh, all flesh had corrupted the way of the Lord upon earth, read. God said unto Noah, uh, The end of all flesh is come before me. Right. For the earth is filled with violence through them. Right. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Go ahead. Make thee an ark of copper wood. Okay, that's it on that. Go back, go back. Read verse 13 again. The book of Genesis chapter 6 verse 13. And God said unto Noah, the end of all flesh is come before is come before me. Read. For the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. He says, I will destroy them with the earth. So Noah was the only one that the Lord saw fit to deliver. Him and his house. That's it. Eight people. Eight people, man, because the Lord did what? The Lord saw, he saw, he found grace in the sight of Noah. Noah was a great man. Noah, like Moses during his time, Noah during his time. Because they feared the Lord, man. When you fear the Lord, the most high God will exalt you in a mighty way for the benefit of your nation. And that's what Noah did. Because, because of Noah, we're here. If it wasn't for Noah, nobody would be on this earth. You really need to think about that thing, man. Noah was a great man. No, listen. Yo, Noah, man, he was a glorious forefather, man. Let me see some. Mm. Give me wisdom, Solomon 14 and 1. The wisdom 
of Solomon chapter 14 verse 1. Read. Again, one preparing himself to say, one, to say, one preparing himself to sail upon the sea, come on. And about to pass through the raging waves. The raging waves, read. Called upon a piece of wood. He did what? Called upon a piece of wood. The ark, read. More rotten than the vessel that carried him. That carried him. The him is Noah and his family. Go ahead. For verily, desire of gain devises that, mm. and that workman, and the workman built it by his skill. And the workman built it by his skill that the Lord gave. Go ahead, watch this. But thy providence, O Father, governed it. Mm. For thou hast made a way in the sea. Thou hast made a way in the sea, come on. And a safe path in the waves. Watch this. Showing that thou can save from all danger. Ray, the flood. Yea, though a man went to sea without art, nevertheless, thou wouldest not that the works of thy wisdom should be idle. The works of the Lord, the works, the wisdom of the Lord should not be idle. Wisdom is a movement. Wisdom is a movement. The same way we're not supposed to be stuck, we're supposed to be moving individually and as a congregation because wisdom of the Lord is what's supposed to push us forward. Read. And therefore, do men commit their lives to a small piece of wood? You see that is as men committed their lives to a small piece of wood. This is a this is a double saying. It's not a single saying. You understand? It's a heavy saying. Read on. And passing the rough sea in a weak vessel are saved. You see that? Is as passing through the what? Passing through the rough sea in a weak vessel are saved. Is it they are saved in a weak vessel? The ark. Go ahead. For in the old time also. For in the what? In the old time also. For in the old time also. This is now Genesis. Go ahead. When the proud giants perished. The proud giants. They were giant in the earth in those days. Genesis 6. Read verse 5. <laughs> verse 4. The book of Genesis chapter 6 verse 4. Read. There were giants in the earth in those days. In the what what days? The old time also that we read in Wisdom of Solomon. Read. And also after that, when the sons of God that's the giants, read, came in unto the daughters of men. Read. And they bare children to them. Read. The same became mighty men, which were of old, uh -huh. men of renown. Famous men. Famous men. Go back. Wisdom of Solomon 14. Verse 5 again. The wisdom of Solomon. No, verse 6. I'm sorry, verse 6. The wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 6. Read. For in the old time also, when the proud giants perished, mm. the hope of the world, governed by thy governed by the hand, escaped in a weak vessel. That's the ark. Read. And left to all ages a seed of generation. That's the Noah and his family. You see this? Go ahead. Because no, it was that's why King Solomon wrote about it too. Go ahead, watch this. For blessed is the wood whereby righteousness cometh. Read that again. For blessed is the wood whereby righteousness cometh. Read that again. For blessed is the wood whereby righteousness cometh. Get X5 is 30. I'm gonna show you something, man. You see that that act. The wood that was used, it wasn't a coincidence. It wasn't the Mosai was just born. He wasn't born. It was a metaphor too. Read what you got, man. Watch this. Acts 5. We read this verse all the time. Acts chapter 5 is 30. Watch this. Acts chapter 5 is 30. Read. The God of our fathers. The God of our fathers. Raised up Jesus. Uh -huh. Whom he slew and hanged on a tree. On a what? On a tree. On a what? On a tree. Go ahead. Him had God exalted with his right hand Read. to be a prince and a savior. Uh -huh. And to, to be a prince and a what? To be a prince and a savior. Yeah. So during the time of Noah, Noah was a savior. He saved his, his, he saved his family and from him cometh all generations. You see that? Read. To be a prince and a savior. Uh -huh. For to give repentance to Israel. Uh -huh. And forgiveness of sins. You see that thing? Go back now. Wisdom of Solomon 14. Verse 6. Verse, verse 7 again. The wisdom of Solomon chapter 14 verse 7. Read. 
For blessed is the wood whereby righteousness cometh. You see that is as blessed is the wood whereby righteousness cometh. Because Christ died on the wood, on the tree. So the same wood that delivered us, our forefather Noah, with his family, is the same wood that delivered us from the old covenant into the new covenant. Next verse. Read. But that which is made with hands is cursed. So what was made with hands? The tabernacle that was made with hands. The mobile tabernacle in the wilderness with Moses. Read. As well as, as well it as he that made it. Read. He because he made it. He because he made it. And it mm -hmm. because being corruptible it was called God. You see that? So because why? Our forefathers, they trusted in the what? In the blood of bulls and of goats, which could never take away sin. But that was just a, a tangent. Let's go back to the class, man. I was just giving an example of our forefathers that was meek. They were fearful of the Lord. And because of them, we are here. They feared the Lord. You understand? Get that in uh, Second Chronicles, okay? Because Obadiah also, he was fearful of the fear of the Lord. Our forefather Obadiah. <coughs> no, the one in First Kings. Yeah, yeah First Kings chapter eighteen. First Kings eighteen was one. The first book of Kings, chapter 18, verse 1. Go ahead. And it came to pass, after many days, that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year, saying, Go, show thyself unto Ahab, mm. and I will send rain upon the earth. Watch this. And Elijah went to show himself unto Ahab, and there was a sore famine in Samaria. Watch this, read. And Ahab called Obadiah. He did what? Called Obadiah. He called Obadiah. Read. Which was the governor of his house. So Obadiah was the governor of the house of Ahab. Watch this. Now, Obadiah feared the Lord greatly. You see that? Obadiah feared the Lord greatly. It's mentioned there. It's letting you know how fearful he was of the Most High. Excuse me. You understand that? That's why it was worthy to be written here. So it's very important to understand that the fear of the Lord comes first. Everything else comes second. You understand? You told me chapter 10. You know what? Uh, start at verse 4. Start, start, read chapter 4. Ah, let's just go there. 10, 12. Read it. You told me 10 verse 12. Book of Deuteronomy, chapter 10 verse 12. Read. And now, Israel, what does the Lord thy God require of thee? That's, this is what the Lord requires of us. He's going to give you a list of things he requires in their priority, of course. Read. But to fear the Lord thy God. That's number one. The number one thing to do is to fear the most High God. That's the number one. The number one thing is to fear the Lord, man. Because, again, the number one thing that Israel don't like is what? The commandments. <laughs> Israel don't like the commandments, man. They hate the commandments. Let's let's hold this. It says to fear the Lord thy God. We must fear the Lord, man. He's saying. Zechariah 7. Yeah. Start of this one. I wanted to just jump to verse 11. Let's start at verse 1. The book of Zechariah, chapter 7, verse 1. And it came to pass in the fourth year of King Darius that the word of the Lord came to Zechariah in the fourth day of the month. Of the ninth month. In the fourth day of the ninth month, even Chelsea. Ch Chislu, the month Chislu. Even Cheslu. Cheslu is the so called December. Go ahead. When they had sent unto the house of God, Sherez mm -hmm. and Rechem, Rechem Melech, 
and their men to pray before the Lord. Read. And he speak, and he speak and to speak and to speak unto the and to speak unto the priests which were in the house of the Lord of hosts. Read. And to the prophet saying, Brothers, you can switch on this line. Is it bad? Is it? Or not yet? Okay, all right. Go ahead. Zechariah chapter 7, verse 3. Read. And to speak unto the priests which were in the house of the Lord of hosts, and to the prophets, saying, Should I weep in the fifth month, separating, my, separating myself as I have done this so many years? You see that he is asking, Should I separate myself as I have done so this so many years? Okay, go ahead. Then came the word of the Lord of hosts unto me, saying, Read. Speak unto all the people of the land. The people of the land is Israel that was scattered in the, the, in the Persian Empire. Read on. And to the priests, saying, When ye fasted and mourned in the, in the fifth and seventh month, Excuse me. Even those seventy years, did ye at all fast unto me? Is it the Lord is asking, When you doing it for me? Read. Even to me. Go ahead. Excuse and me. when ye did eat, and when ye did drink, did not ye eat for yourselves and drink for yourselves? You see what he say? So when he say, when they were fasting, they were not acknowledging the Most High. You know how you don't acknowledge the Most High when you fast? You are not sin specific. You just enter into a fast. It's just general. And you list a whole lot of stuff. Just list one thing, man, and deal with them. And then when you fast again, list the other stuff, deal with them. If you are doing multiple days, break up the days. Associate each demon that you know you're struggling with with each day. And fast about that. Read scriptures surrounding that. Send, to the, send prayers to the Lord about that. Then the Lord says, okay, serious. You understand? So, the Lord is asking here. Read. Should ye not hear? Should ye not hear the word which the Lord had cried by the former prophets when Jerusalem was inhabited and in, and in prosperity and the city thereof round about her when men inhabited the south and the plain? Read. And the word of the Lord came unto Zechariah, saying, Watch this. Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Execute true judgment. Because when they were fasting, they were not doing that. The thing that was missing was execution of just judgment. The Lord loveth judgment, but it wasn't being done. Read that again. Book of Zechariah, chapter 7, verse 9. Read. Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, mm -hmm. saying, Execute true judgment. Execute true judgment during your fastings, your prayers, your eating and your drinking. Read. And show mercy and compassion every man to his brother. You see what he's saying? Because this wasn't being done. Even though there were fastings, there were prayers, but judgment was not being executed. Mercy was not being shown. Compassion was not being shown. Basically, the royal law was not being applied. What does that mean? The laws of God, the milk was not being taught. Thou shall not. Thou shall not. Thou shall not. Those, the, those, those laws were not being taught to Israel. Don't commit adultery. Don't lie. Yeah, as an example. These things were not coming out. Read. And oppress not the widow. And don't oppress the widows, meaning those that their husbands have died. Read on. No, the fatherless. No, the fatherless. Like we have sisters up in here. Those are fatherless. Okay, go ahead. The stranger. The stranger. Read. No, the poor. Because we the poor. Go ahead. And let none of your and let and let none of your image. Not let none of you imagine. What are you reading? Man? Come on, pay attention. Read that again, verse 10. And let none of you imagine. Read, read verse 10 again. The book of Zechariah, chapter 7, verse 10. Read. And oppress not the widow, nor the fatherless, the stranger, nor the poor. Read. And let none of you imagine evil against his brother in your heart. You see what the Bible is saying? And let none of you imagine evil against his brother in your heart. Meaning what? 
Don't hate your neighbor as yourself. So the royal law was not being applied during these days. So there was all men of evil going on. The widows were being oppressed. The fatherless were being oppressed. The strangers were being oppressed. And the poor, those that didn't have anything. He says, and let none of you imagine evil against his brother in your heart. Because the evil is what? Oppressing the widow, the fatherless, and the stranger, and the poor. That's the evil. Right? But, but they refused to hearken. You see that? That's the key right there. Because they didn't fear the Lord. But they refused. They said, to hell with the royal law. We're not going to apply that. You know, you notice what like ever since the men's conference from the park, that's what we've been dealing with ever since, until now. We've just been dealing with the royal law, the royal law, over and over. It comes in multiple ways, but it's just been the royal law over and over. Some people got tired of that and left. Because to hell with the royal law. I want some heavy stuff. Read that verse again. Zechariah, chapter 7, verse 11. But they refused to hearken. But they refused to hearken. And pulled away the shoulder. You know that? That means this person is stubborn and rebellious. They pulled away the shoulder. You ever see somebody, you touch them, they're like... Yeah, that's what they are. That's what he says. Israel was doing that spiritually. Read. And stop their ears. La, 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 la. Like this, that's what they were doing. You understand? Read. That they should not hear. That they should not understand what was being said. That's why it says, evil men understand not judgment. You see that now? Right there. That they should not hear. Mean they should not understand. Read. Yea, they made their hearts as an adamant stone. Meaning they hardened their hearts. Read. Lest they should hear the law. Because that's the key right there. They hardened their hearts, meaning what? They were stiff-hearted. They were stiff-necked. Just so they don't have to hear, thou shalt not. Because if you're telling me I mustn't do one, two, three, that means I'm being personal with you. Yeah, because the laws of God will invade your personal space. That's why you can teach the, the Deuteronomy 28, verse 15 through 68. Everybody will be standing in front of you. The minute you read the curses, you show that Christ is black, then jump to thou shalt not. You're going to see some things. That's why when you're at camp, you must, be, you must use wisdom. You pull the curse, you pull the, you pull the, you pull the curse, then you pull the, the law. You just be rotating among the two. They curse the law, they curse the law, they curse the law. So that when they're about to leave, you bring the Jeremy 28, then they're like, mm, let me hear that. While they're holding on, bring the law. Like that. Until by the time they are gone, they're like, that nigga right there. You know, I loved what he was bringing up, but I hate the fact that he was telling me what to do. But you heard it now. You can't unhear what you heard. So that's the key. That's why sometimes you just go straight to it. You go straight to the law, then after, you bring the curses. Because you read the law, you go through the 28 and all that, the color scripture and all that, and then the minute you teach... The law now and all that, people start to scatter. You've seen it many times at camp. The minute you start to teach about marriage, all of a sudden the sister is going to, she's going to phone call. All of a sudden the brother is scratching himself, he's talking to somebody who's just passing by. They don't even know him. Or you go through the curses and all of that, and then after that you say, do you know who you are now? He's like, yeah, I'm me. You're like, what? <laughs> you go through the whole thing, he's going to tell you, I'm me. You're like, listen, just go to the law now. You know, just go straight to the law. Don't be going around and because you know, they also going to do, just go to the law. Then after that, you show them, actually, they didn't know I'm reading you this, these laws that you are breaking. is because you're Israel. Then you're going to the identity. But if they are with you, are you go through the curses, ne? You go through the laws, you go through the color scriptures, and then you understand like that. But if you see some rebellion, just go straight to the law. Yes, sir. You go straight to the law. Yes. And it's so nice when we're explaining it outside. We're in here. <laughs> you understand? We're not in here. Because it's nice when we talk about those. Are this. No, no, no. Up in here. It's nice when we're going over the house of the dragon. 
The minute we go over the royal law, you can see everybody is a roboticist. They be twitching like robots in their people. Everybody knows uh, he's a mechanical, he's a mechatronics. Hmm? <laughs> yeah? Read verse 11 again. Verse 12. One more again. Zechariah chapter 7, verse 12. Yea, they made their hearts as an adamant stone. Ray. Lest they should hear the law. Because they don't want to hear the laws of God. Because the laws of God bring order. Laws of God get rid of the chaos. Read. And the words which the Lord of hosts had sent has sent in his spirit. In his what? In his spirit. The Holy Spirit. Read. By the former prophets. By the former prophets. Therefore came a great wrath from the Lord of hosts. Do you see that? Because where we are now is an example of the wrath that came upon us as a nation. Because we did not fear the Lord. When the Lord set up men, they're like, no, we don't want to hear you, nigga. We don't want to hear you. We want to hear what God has to say. They Listen. You know, you know, like you always see the spirit. By the way, we don't believe what the brother is bringing out. We don't believe it. We want to hear the law, him, the Lord Himself. Meaning, only God can judge me. Okay, let's 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 entertain that just for a second. Give me the book of Exodus. Ne? Yeah, I want to go there. For those of you doubting, Thomas is online. Those that want to, only God can judge me. Let's see. Exodus 20, read verse 18 for me. The book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 18. Watch this. And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings, and the noise, and the noise of the trumpet, and the mountain smoking. The mountain is the Mount Zion, was smoking, right? And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. They removed because the Lord was in there. So they had to step back. Read. And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us. He said, No, no, no. You speak to us now. We don't want to hear from the Lord because of what they just saw. I get they wanted to speak to the Lord directly, meaning only God can judge me. Tupac, of course. You understand? Read. And we will hear. And we will hear. Because when they saw Mount Zion on fire, they're like, mm, no, 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 Moses, you be the one. You talk to the Lord directly, Moses. Read. But let not God speak with us, uh -huh. lest we die. You see that? We don't want the Lord to speak to us. No, 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 Moses, please, please, please. Let the, we want to speak to you. Now, all of a sudden, they, they reverence Moses now, all of a sudden. <laughs> but that's Israel for you. We gladden for punishment, man. God, we want to see, we want the punishment to come so we can say, yes, the brother was right. He was in the spirit. <laughs> After the fact, the examples that were left in here, they were written for our learning. They're for the things, for the, the thing, whatsoever things were written aforetime, were written for us to learn. But guess what? Israel don't want to listen. Deuteronomy 10. Actually, Zechariah 8, verse 16. You know what? You know what? Verse 13. The book of Zechariah, chapter 8, verse 13. And it shall come to pass right? that as you are cursed, you are a curse among the heathen. Because right now we are a curse among the heathen. Right? O house of Judah. Uh -huh. And house of Jerusalem. And house of Israel. That's all 12 tribes. Come on. So, will I save you? Will I what? Will I save you? He's right there. Is, this is the salvation scripture. He's telling you who's going to be saved. Mm -hmm. Read. Right? And ye shall be a blessing. Mm. Fear not, but let your hands be, a, be strong. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Read. Right? For thus said the Lord of hosts. Uh -huh. As I... As I thought to punish you. As I thought to punish you. Come on. When your fathers provoked me to wrath. You see what our forefathers did, man? When your fathers provoked me to wrath. Because we are our fathers. <laughs> Go ahead. When your fathers provoked me to wrath, said the Lord of hosts. And I repented not. The Lord says, and I repented not. What did he do? He punished us. Read. So again, 
Have I thought in these days? In these last days, I have thought to do the same thing, and he did it. Read. To do well unto Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. Fear ye not. When we get our minds right. But watch this. These are the things that ye shall do. Stop right there. The Lord is going to give you the ingredients of how to get the kingdom. Read. Speak ye every man the truth to his neighbor. You see that? What is he saying? Apply the royal law. You know what this is saying? Hold this. Give me Exodus 20. This is what he's saying. Exodus chapter 20, read verse 16. The book of Exodus chapter 20, verse 16. Read. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. That's what he's saying. You see that? That's what he's saying right there. Go ahead, go back. 8 verse 16. The book of Zechariah chapter 8 verse 16. Read. These are the things that ye shall do. Uh -huh. Speak ye every man the truth to his neighbor. You see that the truth to his neighbor. Thou shalt not bear false witness against your neighbor. Lest you fall into, lest you swim in the lake of fire. Read. Execute the judgment of truth. Execute the judgment of truth. Meaning apply the laws of God to one another. Read. Execute the judgment of truth and peace in your gates. Meaning councils. The gate is the councils. That's the judges. Okay, read. And let none of you imagine evil, evil in your heart against his name. So what is he going over? He is going over the royal law. Love your neighbor as yourself. That's what he's going over here. Go ahead. And let none of you imagine evil in your heart against his neighbor. Read. And love no false oath. You see that? Don't bear false witness. Read. For all these are things that I hate, mm. said the Lord. You see that? The Mosa is telling you that this is what we must apply in the lens of our captivities. Because from verse 12, he's telling us that we're going to be prosperous. The Lord says, you are no longer going to be a curse among these heathens. But for that to take place, verse 16 and 17 must be applied. If verse 16 and 17 don't take place, guess what? We are not going to be in the land of the living. It will always go back to the royal law. Make no mistake about it. Because that's where we struggle as a people. We struggle there. Okay? Go back to Deuteronomy 10 verse 12 now again. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 12. Read. And now, Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? Read. But to fear the Lord thy God. But you must fear the Lord your God. So our forefathers during the time of Persia, they did it. Which is why the royal law was not being applied. They were fasting and praying in vain. Read. To fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways. You see, that's the second thing. We must walk in all his ways. You know what this means? Deuteronomy 28. That's one. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 1. Read. And it shall come to pass. Uh -huh. If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Read. To observe and to do all his commandments. To do what? To observe and to do all his commandments. You see that part right there? To walk in all his ways. That is commandments. The Lord wants us to walk in all his ways. Read. Which I commanded thee this day. Which I suggested. Which I commanded thee this day. Which I commanded you this day. Read on. That the Lord thy God will set thee on high, above all nations of the earth. That's the same thing we said in Zechariah. We shall be no more a curse among these heathens. So go back, Deuteronomy 10, verse 12 again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 10, verse 12. Now Israel, what does the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God. To walk in all his ways. To love him. That's the third thing. Love is the, is, is on the third on the list. Because you hear the Christians, they escape. Fear the Lord. Walk in all his ways. They just jump to love. And the love they're talking about is lust. It's not love. They lust after Caesar Borgia. 
That's why they blonde and bleach their skin and their hair. Because that's their last. They last to do you, they last to envy. Yeah, they last to envy. What is the envy? The oppressor. You see the connect? They last to envy their oppressor. So they don't love the Lord. They lust after Caesar. They want to be like him. Read on. To walk in all his ways. To love him. And to serve the Lord thy God. With all thy heart and with all thy soul. You see that? So that means, Urari, you, you and this Bible must be one. That's what it says. With all thy heart and with all thy soul. Read. To keep the commandments of the Lord mm. and his statutes, Read. which I command thee this day for thy good. You see that? So the Lord is teaching us how to get our minds right. He's giving us the steps right here. But the number one thing that the Lord keeps giving us, he says, we must fear him. We must fear the Lord. The, the prophet Isaiah said the same thing. Give me that in Isaiah 8. Isaiah chapter 8, read verse 13. The book of Isaiah chapter 8, verse 13. Read. Sanctify the Lord of hosts himself. You see that? Sanctify the Lord of hosts himself. How? You keep the commandments. Read. And let him be your fear. And let him be your what? Be your fear. Be your fear. Read. And let him be your threat. Meaning you must reverence the king. That's what he's saying. And let him be your fear. That's it. So the thing that the thing to understand, right? The thing that the thing that I notice, I notice this. A lot of the times, ne, um, going back to the studies business, when you study, ne, you have to really like uh, be involved, just be an active student when you study. Yes, because remember, you, here you are, you are studying, right? You're reading the history and all that. You're reading about Ujeorem and whatnot and whatnot. But the problem is, you don't realize, Ure, when you read the history, the history is your day-to-day -day stuff that you deal with. I get the history, they are going into the details. No, he was wearing this, it was raining, you understand? And then he went to eat at noon. You understand? It was this day of the month. It was at dawn. And this happened. He entered into the house. He sat down. So, like, that's what you do on a daily. So that's what the history is for. The history is there for your, for your day to day life. It's, it's to help you to cope with your day to day. That's what the history is for. You get up, they got up. They went to work, you went to work. You ate, you, you, they, they ate, you ate. You had family, they had families. They dealt with the heathens, we're dealing with the heathens. So there's nothing different from what they went through than what we are going through. So that's why the history is there. You can't say, no, but you know, with us it's different. It's not different. Because they also were building families during those days, we're doing the same thing. They had centuries during those days, we have the same thing. So the history is for that purpose also. To help you to cope with your day to day. That's the point. That's why when you, hear, you read Exodus, you read Leviticus numbers and all that, we were building and all that, and we start to read the book of Chronicles and uh, Kings and Chronicles, you start to see day to day stuff going on. So, Keep that in mind, man. As you're going over this, that's what you must do. You must remember that. It must not, it must not be this mindless drone of exercise that you're doing that you are disconnected to. The minute you're about to start, you already you want to fall asleep. The sleep demon jumps on you. You can't even take 10 minutes to concentrate on a verse. You just want to hurry up and buy. Like you're going into to go to go to Pakistanis. Hurry up and buy. You understand? 
So you cannot see the Bible like that, man. Um, let me show you something, right? Give me the book of uh, uh, First Chronicles. No, not first. Yeah, second Chronicles. Yeah. Yeah, second Chronicles twenty one. That's one. The second book of the second book of Chronicles, chapter twenty one, verse one. Read. Now Jehoshaphat slept with his fathers. Jehoshaphat. And was buried with his fathers in the city of David. And Jehoram, his son, reigned in his state. Read. And he had brethren. The sons of Jehoshaphat. So he had brethren. So Jehoram had brethren. Okay. Read. Azariah and Jehiel and Zechariah and Azariah and Micaiah and Mikhail and Shephatai. And, and Shephatai. Go ahead. All these were the sons of Jehoshaphat, king of Israel. Jehoshaphat. Read that again. And all these what? And all these were the sons of Jehoshaphat, king of Israel. Read. And their father gave them great gifts of silver and of gold. So these leaving them an in inheritance. Read. And of precious things mm. with fenced cities in Judah. Even land. Go ahead. But the kingdom gave he to Jehoram. Jehoram. And the, but the kingdom gave he to Jehoram because he was the firstborn. Watch this. Read. Now, when Jehoram was risen up to the kingdom of his father. Now, Jehoram is the king. He is the king now, right? He's sitting in his father's seat. Read, watch what he does. He strengthened himself mm -hmm. and slew all his brethren with the sword. You cannot make this up. He didn't learn from his father. He decided he didn't fear the Lord. I'm showing you he did not fear the Lord. Read. And slew all his brethren with the sword. And divers, and divers, and divers also of the princes of Israel. This is a, this is a mighty man. Read. Jehoram was thirty and two years old when he began to reign. He was thirty-two. Come on. And he reigned eight years in Jerusalem. Watch this. Go ahead. And he walked in all in and he on you and he he walked in the way of the kings of Israel. So that's letting you know. You see what he did? He didn't follow his father, King Jehoshaphat. Who did he fall? Keep going. <laughs> and he and he walked in the ways of the kings of Israel, like as did like as did the house of Ahab. You see what he did? He decided to use Ahab as an example on how to fortify the kingdom. He didn't learn anything because remember what he did? He killed all his brothers. So Jehoram, he had hated for his own brothers. So guess what? He didn't apply the royal law. He didn't fear the Lord. He didn't. Read. And he walked in the way of the kings of Israel. Uh -huh. Like as did the house of Ahab. Watch what, watch what he did next. Watch what he does next. Because Jehoram was a son husband. That's what you need to understand. Jehoram was a son husband. Read. For he had the daughter of Ahab to wife. That's it. <laughs> you see what he did? He married Ahab's daughter. Go ahead. And... He wrote that which was evil in the eyes of the Lord. You see what he did? So Jehoram did not fear the Lord because he was walking in the ways of Ahab. You understand? First he, he, get, he ascends to the throne and he killed all his brothers. Okay, read verse 11 now. Watch this. Verse 11. Uh -huh. Moreover, he made high places in the mountains of Judah mm -hmm. and caused the inheritance. And caused the what? And caused the inhabitants of Jerusalem to commit fornication. Uh -huh. And compelled Judah there to. You see what happened? Jehoram was a demon. Now read verse 13. Verse 13. Uh -huh. But has walked in the way of the kings of Israel. You see, so listen, man. Jehoshaphat was a righteous king. When you read about the history of Jehoshaphat, he was a righteous king. But no. This boy did not follow his father's footsteps. He was enticed by the house of Ahab. Because the women were feisty up in there. 
The women were not boring. No, no, you want the boring girl. No, I'm serious. I'm serious, man. Go ahead, you want the feisty one. <laughs> yeah, go for the feisty one. Yeah, you'll, you'll see some flames. Go ahead. Do it. You understand? We're not going to beat you God speed either. Read verse 13 again. The second book of Chronicles, chapter 21, verse 13. Read. But has walked in the way of the kings of Israel mm -hmm. and has made Judah and has made Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to go a whoring mm. like to the whorings of the house of Ahab. You see that? Ray? And also has slain thy brethren. You see what he did? He slain his own brothers. Go ahead. Of thy father's house. You read? Which were better than thyself. You see that? No. They were better than him. But, and he knew them. So he discovered quickly, mm, these my brothers are better than me. I'm going to kill them. Excuse me. Go ahead. Okay, that, uh, that's it on that. But I just wanted to show you. Ne? Listen, the, 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 the leadership position, man, <laughs> is not something to play with. You see what Jehoram was doing? Jehoram was not in the spirit, man. He didn't follow the ways of his father. He didn't. He did evil in the sight of the law. That's what we're reading here. My point is this. The fear of the Lord will get you killed. That's the point. The fear of the Lord will get you sick. The Lord will plague you with a loathsome disease that never ends. So that goes for the men. That goes for the women. The Lord will play you with something. Yes, of course. Of course the Lord will do that. He will play you with something that never goes away. And that thing can be, can be a curse or it can be a blessing. What do I mean? The Lord can play you with that and you can now see that and humble yourself and change your ways and the Lord have mercy upon you. Or, or not. I just wanted to give an example. Because Jehoram, he didn't fear the Lord. Man. He did not fear the Lord. Okay. Go back to Psalms 111 and 10. Go back there. The book of Psalms, chapter 111, verse 10. Wait. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Come on. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. His praise endures forever. His praise endures forever. So the laws of God, they endure forever. But the thing is, you must fear the Lord, man. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It's the beginning of knowledge. Okay? Get that in Proverbs. Proverbs 1, verse 7. The book of Proverbs, chapter 1, verse 7. Come on. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. You see that? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Come on. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. You see that? It goes back to instruction. So which means that when you don't want to follow instruction, you don't fear the Lord. When you quarrel at an instruction, because you might find or you are being given an instruction, but guess what you do? You are complaining on the inside. When well, you're not realizing what the voice of murmuring is not heard. Let's prove that. Give me Proverbs 1. I mean, Wisdom of Solomon 1. <laughs> because I can, cause sometimes, it, not sometimes, if a lot of the times I've noticed, or like it, it doesn't matter what type of an instruction it is, man. There's always some preaching that has to take place. Why is that? Because you don't fear the Lord. Because you're thinking... No, I don't want to listen to the leadership. That's fine. But you're not deceiving me. You're deceiving you. Because on the day of judgment, because right now, because you're thinking, no, I still got time. Because that's another spirit you'll be walking in. Both men and women. you think, thinking, no, I still got time. Meaning what? You are given an instruction, because it will always go back to an instruction. It doesn't matter how you look at it. It always goes back to that. An instruction, you listen, you apply, you get wisdom, you grow. Like that. 
But when you refuse instruction, guess what's going to happen? You're going to have problems in your life, man. And it, it might not be big things. It will be small things which will cause huge problems in your life. You understand? Yeah, wisdom of Solomon 1, verse 9. The wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 9. Come on. For inquisition shall be made into the counsel of the ungodly. Read. And the sound of his words shall come up at shall come unto the Lord for the manifestation of his wicked deeds. So guess what? The thing that you need to understand is when you are given an instruction, the Mosa will give an instruction through the prophet. The Mosa is not gonna come down here to tell you what to do. He says, You have my word, now what? But the thing is, you don't like who is bringing the instruction to you. Yeah, actually you don't like who's telling you what to do. You think it's me, it's not me, it's the Lord telling you what to do. But then, you still remain in here, but you don't want to be told what to do. Then why be here? Well, that means, you are just Judas in the making. You are Noah Dias, the prophetess, in the making. Go ahead. For the ear of jealousy heareth all things. The ear of jealousy will hear all things because that's the voice of murmuring. Go ahead. And the noise of murmurings is not heard. Is not heard. Is not hidden. So whether you complain out loud, whether you complain on the inside with yourself, by yourself, after you are given the instruction, the Lord hears it. It doesn't matter. The Lord hears it. Oh, is he complaining this one? He don't like to do this. He doesn't want to do He hates this. The Lord says what? The voice of murmuring is not heard. Jump up to verse 8. Verse 8. Therefore, he that speaketh, un he that speaketh unrighteousness, unrighteous things cannot be heard. You see what the Lord is saying? You speak unrighteous things. The Lord says you cannot be hidden. Read. Neither shall vengeance when it when it punishes, pa neither shall vengeance when it punishes pass by him. The Lord says you will not be left unpunished. That's the point. You speak unrighteous things, the Lord says you're going to be punished for it. One way or another. That's why it says, whatever it is that you, whatever comes out of your mouth, you will be condemned by what you say. Or you will be justified. Get that in uh, Matthew. Matthew chapter 12. Yeah, 1236. The book of Matthew chapter 12, verse 36. But I send to you that every idle word that men shall speak, mm -hmm. they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. You see that? The day of judgment is after a thousand years. That's the day of judgment. That's why it says, let your communication be yay, yay, nay, nay. Whatsoever is more than this, cometh of evil. Because by your words you will be justified, by your words you shall be condemned. So you must be very careful what you say. Okay, because the voice of murmuring is not hate. Give me that in uh, Sarah 2. Yeah, Sarah chapter 2, read verse 7. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 7. Go ahead. Ye that fear the Lord, wait for his mercy. Wait for his mercy. Wait for his mercy. So you wait for his mercy while you keep in the commandments. Read. And go not aside. Lest you fall. Don't go aside lest you fall. Because you are going to fall if you go aside from this Bible. You will fall into sin. Read. Ye that fear the Lord, believe him. Believe him. Go ahead. And your reward shall not fail. The reward is the kingdom. Be ready for the reward of the kingdom. Read. Ye that fear the Lord, hope for good. Hope for good. Come on. And for everlasting joy and mercy. That's the kingdom of heaven on earth. Okay. Sarah chapter 1, read verse 11. Of Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 11. Read. The fear of the Lord is honor mm. and glory and gladness and a crown of rejoicing. So if you don't fear the Lord, you're not going to have these. These are the fruits of the Spirit. 
glory, gladness, crown of joy, and honor. So if you don't have these, you don't fear the Lord that means. Be a grumpiest. Always just be grumpy. You always have to be asked, hey, what's wrong with the brother? You understand? Some brothers, you know some brothers, I rebuked the Negro this week. The brother called, I, I think, I, I was like the one that called or he called. And I'm hearing on the other side of the phone, I'm like, what the hell is wrong with you? Why are you so depressed? He's like, no, you know, I was not, I was getting up and whatnot. I'm like, hmm, you better fix that. <laughs> Read verse 11 again. You know who you are. Verse 11 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 11. Read. The fear of the Lord is honor and glory and gladness and a crown of rejoicing. Read. The fear of the Lord maketh a merry heart. Maketh a merry heart. It doesn't mean you're always laughing. It means you have the spirit of joy. You have peace in your heart. Because you're keeping the commandments. Because the question is, you have joy, but what's bringing you the joy in your life? Quote, unquote. Because you can say, you know the brother is, has the spirit of joy, but what is the thing that's bringing him joy? Because that's the question you have to ask. Is the thing that bringing him joy the correction in the book? <laughs> or is the thing that bringing him joy something else other than what's written in the book? That's the question. Because nobody ever asked that. Or what's the source of his joy? Is it the book? Or is it something different? Hmm. Go ahead. The fear of the Lord maketh a merry heart. Read. And give and give it joy. And give it joy. Come on. And gladness. And gladness. And a long life. And a long life. You live forever. The long life is living forever. Is the kingdom. Read. Whoso feareth the Lord, it shall go well with him at the last. At the last, meaning when the Lord returns. Go ahead. And he shall find favor in the day of his death. You, you, whoa, some heavy stuff, man. He's going to find favor in the day of his death. Hmm. Meaning what? Let's take uh, some things, you see. Give me the book of Matthew 17. Let's start with one. Just going to read down. The book of Matthew, chapter 17, verse 1. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John. Peter, James, and John. Come on. Peter, Hold James. on. Wait, wait. Actually, you know what? Let's go to the book of Deuteronomy. I think I'll do it like that. Deuteronomy, chapter... Deuteronomy 34. Deuteronomy, chapter 34. Start with one. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 34, verse 1. Read. And Moses went up from the plains of Moab unto the mountain of Nebo. Nebo. Go ahead. Unto the mountain of Nebo, to the top of Pisgah, that is over against Jericho. Jericho. Read. And the Lord showed him all the land of Gilead unto Dan, uh -huh. and all Naphtali, and the land of Ephraim, and Manasseh, and all the land of Judah, and to the uttermost sea. Mm -hmm. Jump down to verse 5. Verse 5. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died. He then, did what? So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died. He died there. Come on. Verse 5 again. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab. Read. According to the word of the Lord. According to the word of the Lord. Read. And he buried him in a bed in the land of Moab, over against Beth Peor. Beth Peor. Beth Peor. Read. But no man knoweth his sepulchre unto this day. Come on. And Moses was an hundred and twenty years old when he died. Read. His eyes was not dim. Mm. Nor his natural faith, nor his natural force abated. You see that Moses died. He was what? He says his eyes was not dim. No, his natural force abated, meaning Moses was in, in full strength when he died. Full strength when he died, man. Full strength. Okay, give me Matthew 21. Wait, is it what I want? Hold on. Yeah, Matthew 14. Read that for me. Verse 1. The 
of Matthew chapter 14 verse 1. Read. At that time, Herod the Tetra heard of the fame of Jesus mm -hmm. and said unto his servants, This is John the Baptist. He is risen from the dead. Read. And therefore, mighty works do show forth themselves in him. Now read verse 10. Verse 10. Read verse 8. Verse 8. And she, being before instructed of her mother, said, Give me here John Baptist's head in a charge. Read. And the king was sorry. Nevertheless, for the old sake, mm. and them which sat, which sat with him, which when they were feasting at meat, come on, which sat with him at meat, he, com he commanded it to be given her. Read. And he sent and beheaded John in the prison. He beheaded John in the prison. So he killed John the Baptist. John the Baptist was beheaded. This is Elijah, which was prophesied for to come. Matthew 17 and 1 now. The book of Matthew chapter 17 verse 1. Read. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up in a high mountain apart. Read. And was transfigured before them. Mm. And his face did shine as, as the sun. Meaning when he says he was transfigured before them, that means his immortal body. He was in his immortal body right here. Go ahead. And his raiment was white as the light. Uh, go ahead. And behold, there appeared unto him, unto them, Moses and Elias, talking with him. Pause. How the hell did this happen? Read that verse again, man. <laughs> verse 4. One more again. Of Matthew chapter 17, verse 4. Then answered Peter. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. Read. If thou wilt, uh -huh. let us make here three tabernacles. Mm. One for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elias. I thought they were dead. Go back to uh, Sirach 1 now. <laughs> Sirach chapter 1. Let's read that verse again. Verse 13. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 13. Read. Whoso feareth the Lord, whoso feareth the Lord, it shall go well with him. It shall go well with him at the what? At the last. At the last of his days, whether in the the, the, the days of the past or in these last days that we in. Go ahead. And he shall find favor in the day of his death. He shall find favor in the day of his death. Hmm. We just read it. They found favor in the day of their death. Because they never died. Go ahead. To fear the Lord is mm. the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Come on. And it was created with, with the faithful in the womb. You see, the fear of the Lord is created with the faithful in the womb. When you are conceived in your mother's womb, the fear of the Lord is with you when the Lord is with you. Go ahead. She had built an everlasting foundation with men. With men, those that are faithful. Come on. And she shall continue with their seed. They shall continue with their seed. Read on. To fear the Lord is fullness of wisdom. Is fullness of wisdom. Come on. And filleth men with the fruits. Mm. Fruits of the Spirit. Come on. She filleth all their houses, all their house with things desirable. Their house. You know what this house is? This house is not the mortal house in the future. Right now, we are in a mortal house. You understand? But the time will come. Go ahead. She filled all their house with, the, with things desirable, and the garners with the increase. Read. The fear of the Lord is a crown of wisdom. That crown of wisdom that the Lord shall give us me in that day. The Apostle Paul, that's what he said, right? The crown of righteousness, which the Lord shall give me in that day. That's what he said. Read. Making peace. You see, the fear of the Lord brings peace. Come on. And perfect health. This is the kingdom, man. Do we have perfect health right now? You can exercise. We're not saying don't exercise. Because you're not the Negro. You can exercise and eat healthy and still get sick. Because this is not the kingdom. 
It doesn't mean you mustn't exercise and eat right. That's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is that can happen to you. Because that's not, we are not in the kingdom, so therefore we don't have perfect health. We're doing our best to look after our mortal bodies so we can prepare for the immortal one. Read that again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, verse 18. Go ahead. The fear of the Lord is a crown of wisdom, making peace and perfect health to flourish. You see that? Making peace and perfect health to flourish. Come on. Both which are the gifts of God. You see, we read the gift of the Lord is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. When we get that eternal life, we're going to have perfect health. Okay? Read. And it enlarges their rejoicing that love him. It will enlarge their rejoicing that love him, that keep his commandments. Read verse 28 now. Verse 28. Read. Distrust not the fear of the Lord. Read verse 27 actually. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 27. Come on. For the fear of the Lord is wisdom. For the fear of the Lord is wisdom. Read. And instruction. And instruction. The fear of the Lord is wisdom and instruction. When you fear the Lord, you'll have wisdom because you receive instruction and you love to receive those instructions. Read. And faith and meekness. And faith in the Lord and what? And meekness. Like Moses was in Numbers 12 verse 3, come on. Are his delight. Are his delight. So the things that the Lord delights, the Lord delights in is what? Following instruction, having faith in his son, and being meek and submissive to his laws. The Lord says, I will delight in you. Go ahead. Distrust not the fear of the Lord uh -huh. and thou art poor. Because right now we're poor. The Lord says, but don't distrust the fear of the Lord. Don't say I'm poor, therefore I cannot keep the commandments. I'm poor, so I have an excuse to sin. No, no, no. The Lord is saying, just because you're poor, that's not license to break his commandments. Keep the command, be faithful with that which is little. Read. And come not unto him with a double heart. Don't be double-minded when you come to the Lord. Because double-minded means you, you're tempting the Lord. You say, I love the Lord, I keep his commandments. But when poverty strikes, guess what you do? You dishonor the Lord, you do whatever the hell you want. You say, but this is license for me to do this because I was poor. we all poor. Christ was poor. I Christ wasn't rich when he walked the earth. You do understand that Christ was born in slavery, right? <laughs> Christ was in captivity. Christ was a slave. Because sometimes we don't get that. The Messiah is making sure we have no excuses, man. You can't say, but the Messiah was different. No, he was like us when he walked the earth. Flesh and blood he had, like us. He was not immortal when he walked the earth. That's why he was what? He was crucified. He was not immortal. He was just like us. And he did what he was supposed to, and he became immortal. He got his reward. So our reward cometh. So we are here on earth. We're going to walk like as he walked. We're also going to do what? We're going to be put to death if that's our fate. Our head going to be chopped off if that's our fate. And once that happens, guess what? You get your reward. That's it. You get your reward. Hmm. Man, he's starting to get a little bit heavy, I think. Read verse 27 and 28 again, man. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, verse 28, mm. verse 27. For the fear of the Lord is wisdom and instruction. Read. And, the, and faith and meekness are his delight. Because, like, you know what, man? You just... Basically, you keep... I'm talking about me. Like... Just to, to make yourself be comfortable, to, you know, just mentally just pray to the Lord to prepare you for that day, man. However you're going to go out. You understand? You're like, whatever scenario that the Lord has planted, the Lord has planned, Father, let me, in, please give him the spirit to enjoy it until the end. That's it. So that when it happens, you're not surprised. You know, oh, now, that is that way right there. You know, that it, this is just me. I'm thinking like that. Lord. In the day when you receive your faith, in that day, especially now that we are in the last days, the way you come out, hmm, you might just know who you is. You just might know. It's just me thinking out loud. It's, <laughs> you're not gonna find a precept for that. I'm just saying. Okay, it's just I'm just saying. Hmm. Let's do it. 
Read. Distrust not the fear of the Lord. And are poor. Uh -huh. And come not unto him with a double heart. Don't come with the, to the Lord with a double heart. To have a double heart means you're one foot in and one foot out. One minute you're keeping the commandments, the one minute you're not. Because there's some excuse you want to fulfill it. And then you, you, are, you understand, you are flip-flopping. The Lord says, I don't want that. So that when you do that, he says, you are distrusting the Lord. So stay focused, stay in the spirit. Okay, let's break, break. In the name of our Lord and Savior, the Christ. I'm going to end the class right here. I'm going to end the class right here. You ready? For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it, this is my body, which is, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as often as as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, so let him eat of this bread, so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord. We pray. Amen. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. Let's give the Lord a hand. So with that, we say shalom, most bless you all, Israel. Oh, praise.